So we wear many alarms and uh, we heard many rockets. Uh, we know what to do in that situation. We went into the safe room. Uh, our door of the safe room didn't uh, close. There, there was a problem. Uh, so Ohad and my husband decided after uh, about two, two hours to go out of the safe room and he shut the door uh, from outside. This was uh, the only way to, to close the door. Uh, he went out, he had a small gun and he waited. And at about uh, 10 o'clock, the terrorist uh, bombed the entrance uh, door and they entered into the house. They shoot Ohad and they uh, open the, safe, the door of the safe room. Me and my three children were sitting together. And they started shouting at us, pointing us uh, guns. And they, they talked in Arab, but uh, also they said, uh, come, come, in English. I understood they, they want to, care, to take us to Gaza. We went out of the safe room. We saw Ohad sitting on the floor, bleeding, injured. But he was talking to us. He told us he loves us and we, that we should go with them. I tried to put on him to save my, my baby. I tried to put on him the baby. The baby's 18 months old. Yeah. I thought they would let her stay, but they didn't. They took her and pushed us, us uh, out of the house. Uh, out of the house, they brought two motorcycles. They put my son, Eitan, he's 12 years old. They put him in the first, first mot motorcycle. And the terrorist, the Hamas terrorist, uh, took my baby on his hand and sat uh, uh, in front of Eitan. Uh, on the second motorcycle, me and my uh, 10 years old daughter, Yael, we're sitting with two terrorists. Luckily, the baby cried and they gave him, passed me the baby. So Eitan was alone on the first mot motorcycle. Me, Yael, and the baby on my hands were in the second motorcycle. Uh, we, start, we start driving to, through Gaza. We saw lots of terrorists. We saw the kibbutz burning. Everything was burning. Very close to the border of Gaza, two tanks of the army arrived and our motorcycle uh, were falling. This was uh, uh, the last time I saw Itan. His motorcycle uh, continued to Gaza. After many hours, someone uh, entered our house, but Oad was not there. Okay. Uh, they took him also. I don't know if he's alive or not. He, he's injured. So Ohad and Eitan, I don't know what's going on with them. Tell me your experience. Tell me what's happened as far as your family is concerned. Five members of my family have been kidnapped. Two of them have been murdered already. I'm here, I came the whole way here for one reason. I want to save my children that's still alive. I want to save my children. It's the only reason I'm here. Had he been taken, I, I, I saw it in a movie that Hamas, Hamas took this movie. I saw him in the movie, the whole world saw this movie. I can't watch it. I just saw the beginning, I couldn't hold it. I can't feel this pain. This boy been taken like this with a few terrorists, Hamas terrorists. You can see he's helpless, terrified, all confused. His worst nightmare become true. Does he get food, water? We don't know nothing, nothing, no information. It's one month now. I think it's 30, 31 days now. Every day we wake up for hell, for this nightmare. Tell me what happened on the 7th of October. My children are alone at home. 
and about two hours after it all started, I was on the phone to them, and um, I could hear, they said, there's someone breaking into the house. They were whispering, someone's in the house, someone's in the house. And I said, be quiet. And I could hear people speaking in Arabic, a few adult men, and the door to the safe room broke. And the last thing I heard on the phone was my youngest, Yagil, saying, you can't take me, I'm too young, don't take me, I'm too young. He was begging for his life. You just try and imagine your children. Well, when was the last time you spoke to them? When was the last time you had a call from them? What was the last thing you heard them say? This was the last thing I heard my child saying, begging for his life. <laughs>